Kim Boyd, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. And they're they're filling in, starting to fill in the dug up parts of my backyard, thank God. So the lower vibrational energies may not attack me so much. Hello, Eric. And, Hi, Mama. Hey, we are gonna talk about uh, just death, you know, there's a lot of people who have death anxiety, of course, you know, for so many of us, it's an unknown, but Eric wants to apparently speak to that. So take it away, Eric. Well, um, we were chatting and thought this would be a good conversation because it does come up every while where somebody is coming to the ends of their life and they'll just hang on and on and on and on. My grandmother actually did that. She died when she was 99 years old. Wow, she wanted and to on. She was very, very afraid to die. And it, it, it's, Eric says, there's nothing to be afraid of. Birth is actually much harder than death. He's telling me right now, but um, yeah. he's, he's saying, you know, um, so many people have had like religious kind of conditioning or conditioning from their families oh. of um oh like there's there's sins that are not going to be forgivable i forget what they're called um i'm trying to have them give me the word um but mortal sins that's what they're called they're, oh, they're the oh, worst that can happen you're not going to be forgiven right. and people think that they're not going to get into heaven for all kinds of silly reasons um Oh, like the Catholic Church would talk about how if you had any kind of relationships before you were married, that you were going to hell. And so people will fight the dying process thinking that they're going to this horrible place, which actually right. there's no such thing. Right. You so know, um, there are lower realms for people who believe in that and that are very violent and keep acting that out. But that's not that's not a punishment thing nobody is punished ever eric so. okay, wait wait so suppose you finally do die and you have this belief that you're going to go to hell then that's the the reality you create for yourself fire and brim, brimstone but does the fire really burn i mean does is it is it really painful and horrible i mean maybe scary yes um well, actually, Eric said that it would not really be, it's cold. It's not hot. It's cold. Oh, That realm is very cold. Oh, um, and as soon, if somebody were to find themselves in that realm, as soon as they realize they don't need to be there and start asking for help, they're immediately helped out of that realm. Um, there was a story, it was actually a book I had written, not written, um, read, mm -hmm. I believe it was called Out of the Darkness, if I'm not mistaken, but a lady had had such um, a traumatic time that she committed suicide yeah. and didn't actually die, but went to the other side and then came back into her body, but she had that belief, and so that's where she ended up, and she said, that she was in this realm where other people were. And she said they were people from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Um, one person she saw, she wondered if he was alive at the time Christ walked the earth because he was dressed in that type of um, clothing. As soon as she had that thought, she was lifted out of that area and was told she didn't need to be there. That wasn't truth. It was just for people who wanted to continue that experience. Wow. And so I guess there are realms that people can bring themselves to, but it it's not a punishment that you're set there. It's um by your own volition. Somebody by their own beliefs, but that's typically not what happens. Because belief, you know, thought creates reality. Yeah. Before you go on, Eric, what is a realm and does it differ from a dimension? It's it's the same, he's saying dimension how many different, different vibrations oh, well a vibrational frequency a different vibrational frequency okay yeah. you yeah. could say there's 13 okay 13 is source oh and the other then two. we have the 12th level 
that's kind of more of a fluid level where there was a separation from source. Okay. Where we all separated from source. That's the 12th level. Then we go down into the 11th level. That's where the individual separated, right? Yeah. Separated into masculine and feminine counterparts, the twin flame. Oh, okay. And we have the 10th level, which is that's pr that's before you start incarnating okay the tenth level then each planetary system has nine levels and then there's also you know there's all these levels on the other side too so there would be 13 levels mm -hmm. ninth is a collective eight is the level between the physical and the spiritual world the uh, connecting with source and then we have all our levels in our body, okay. just like they have levels on the other side. So there would it be to 13 or not. Um, yeah, our physical bodies are actually the manifestation. Our spirit is the blueprint. So whatever is blueprinted, our matrix is what holds the form for our physical bodies. Okay. So we create our bodies by lowering our frequency. And then we have to have parents, of course, too, but we keep lowering our frequency. So there would be 13 dimensions. 13 is all the way to source. And that's where if you merge back into source, Eric says he doesn't, um, have you done that? I don't think he has. He's not making me feel like he has, but he's okay. came close and because he's saying he doesn't like it because oh. you lose not that he doesn't like it he's he's not comfortable with it you lose all sense of individuation yeah and you have to be have individuation in order for you to be mm -hmm. archangel eric here helping us right. right but like somebody who's completed all of their cycles gone through all of the lives that they have and graduated they can merge oh yeah he's telling me to tell you this they can merge back with source and then they come out as like a new soul. So, you know, when somebody told oh. you Arlene was a new soul, came straight yeah. from God. Yes. Because she completed all these other lives, merged with source again, and then reemerged to start again, I guess is how you'd say it. Cool. So when you complete all these cycles, you pretty much done with spiritual menopause, right? No you more could cycles. call it that. You, you could call it that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so he's saying there's nothing to be afraid of. Um, so what does it feel like? Can you choose to have a painful death if you wish to experience that for whatever reason? Well, the pain, the pain is in the physical body. Once you yeah. leave the physical body, there is no more, no more pain. Well, that's true. Yeah. Um, but but he he says now this surprised me when he told me this that um, we just stop over on the other side for a little while a brief amount of time we get our life review all that talk to the elders and then we're off to our next mission and i said wait a minute don't isn't everybody like what we think hanging out on the other side waiting for their relatives to cross over and he said some do if they want to have that experience he said otherwise the higher the higher self is always there. That's who you would meet with when you cross over. But he says some people, when they die, because we have so much um, genetics in us from different planets, they have a stronger genetic link to a different planet. So they would go to their, their matrix. So they may be reborn back onto their, that planet. Or they may be on the other side on that planet. They may not stay oh. in this realm. So I was really kind of confused by that. It's not exactly how we think. Yeah. And so then I asked, well, okay, so I'm asking them right now if, because we'll channel people's higher self or if they're still in the heaven realm, I guess you'd call it. Right. He, so here's he's giving me this example so like one of my mother-in-laws i was married twice well still married for the second time but my first mother-in-law has transitioned now she is not reincarnated yet so 
if I want to talk to her and she will talk to me sometimes, she can tell me about things like that she remembered in her life, like um, uh, gardening or sewing, that stuff she liked to do. She would, if I was going to be doing a sewing project, she could give me little hints or tell me. But if she had transitioned or crossed over, been reborn into another life, I'm saying that wrong, um, she would have lost kind of some of those memories. It wouldn't have been, why are you saying she wouldn't have lost them? It just wouldn't have been in the forefront of her memory because it's not important to her anymore. Yeah, of course. She's but not the person who's, who hasn't gone on to a new life, some of those details are still important and they still remember. So he says, it's nothing to be afraid of. It doesn't hurt. It's a whooshing sensation. Oh. And it moves very quick and it's just all this light. Some people will resist it and stay earthbound for a while. It's not always because of fear or greed or those kinds of things. It can also be like, um, oh, say like a parent that still has young children. Oh, yeah. They'll often stay and watch their family that kind of thing. Um, but it it's just a matter of um, what well, he's saying too. Sometimes people, when they've died, like in a hospice situation. Yeah. Where they've had so many medications. Oh yeah. That can kind of lower their frequency. And sometimes they'll have a little bit of a hard time crossing over till they raise their frequency a little. Okay. Well, do, are there entity spirits that help them with that mm -hmm. they're angels they're guides but the thing is if their vibration is really low they can't hear them or see mm -hmm. them just like with us you yeah know, yes it much uh, a much less of an experience when our vibration is low um so their guides and angels will come and help them um children he's telling me to talk about yeah, children I got the, I children got the, somebody yeah. always comes for them they're never left confused and wondering because I, I thought that there was something about children in purgatory well what if what's purgatory? that was that was created yeah. by the churches to it, keep us in fear kind of like some realm that they're, they were tapping into when they when they made up the the idea of purgatory is Where, there, can is you say that again? I didn't that? understand the question. Is it is there a realm similar to or uh, that has the attributes of this purgatory idea that they made up? Um, well, that would be the second lower realm. Okay. For people who think they have to make up for it. Um, no, no children ever go to purgatory except maybe if they had that belief but they would be helped it would have to be that was actually um started by the churches telling us that if you weren't baptized you go to hell or purgatory and so people couldn't understand how a little child that it wasn't their fault they weren't baptized okay. yet could go to hell then they said well then they're probably in purgatory a state of limbo forever and it's just not true. It sounds so silly. If you don't splash water on your head, then I know it's more than splashing water on, on my on your head. But well, Eric, Eric is saying, you know, um, people do that. There's this idea that there's original sin that we're born with sin. Eric says what original sin is. Sin is an error in consciousness, and the error is is thinking that you're separate from source. That's Whoa. what original sin is. It's not that you were born dirty. It's that you were um, basically lied to and told you were separate from source. But we have to have that illusion, though, of separation. We do. We do so that we can grow. But right. that 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 is wow, that's original cool. sin. That's the illusion that we're separate from source. That's pretty powerful. All right. So it kind of feels like a swooshing, whooshing, right? And whooshing. then what? whooshing a lot of energy a lot of power um if you could hear it can you hear it eric he says you can hear it sounds like a tornado oh wow okay and you just emerge on the other side um i have seen people leave their bodies and go to the other side they could be a little old lady or a little old man 
by the time they get to the other side, they look like they're about 20 years old again. Wow. Nice. You know, any disease or malfunction they were carrying is just gone and they're young and, and vital. And that's, that's our appearance on the other side. Wow. 20 or 30. And we can choose whatever appearance mm -hmm. we want, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And he says, some people do like to hang out. Cause I asked him, what about all these people that we talk to them when we say, what are you, what are you doing over there? And they tell us they're fishing or, or that kind of thing. Eric says, yes, they do that. If that's what, you know, something they loved and they want to create a little cabin in the woods where they can go fishing, you know, by a little lake, they create it for themselves and that's what they do. And then a certain percentage or population of people will all hang out and wait for everybody to come over and then they'll plan their new lives and some will go off to other planets or have lifetimes on other planets okay you don't always too the other thing to remember sometimes people come from planets or beings come from other planets to because this is a earth is a school yeah and so they'll come in from a lower frequency to learn here what what we do here and if they're already a lower frequency um they can really easily be swayed into um doing um, malevolent kind of things wow is that what where the lower vibrational entities like negative entities um is that where they're from or in part not necessarily no eric says that's that can be um they can be from any density planet or anywhere, oh. just that they are a violent person that hasn't, they're violent, they're aggressive, whatever the situation is, they haven't gone through the life cycles to, oh. uh, to learn that yet. All right, so uh, where are the lower vibrational energies, like the ones that started attacking me when they started digging up my ground, my backyard? Are they, what realm are they in? Oh, um, well, it can be earthbound spirits. Mm -hmm. And also if we've had any kind of history um, uh, with like reptilians or anything oh, like okay. that, it, it can be that also. Okay. Because you got to realize um, reptilians, they're not human. They don't come from God. They don't answer to the same source. Oh, so there's other sources, other sources. Yes, yes, yes. They right. are not they do not have the same source as we do I they that. they do not want this planet ascending and so they will do everything they can to prevent the people and the planet from completing their mission and completing their goal so they'll come through to people and try to scare them or stop them from what they're doing um you just counteract it with love you yeah. don't go into fear you just send them love right and don't get mad either. Like, get out. Yeah, you can't. No, no, it. that doesn't, that yeah. doesn't do anything. That, that energizes them. Right. When so you send them love, they can't right. handle it. How many source systems are there? Eric says multiple. Oh, just okay. it's very, very it's vast. Infinite. I would have a hard time deciphering all of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's very vast. Oh, wow. God, so weird. So uh, there's more than one afterlife then. There's an, a separate afterlife. Is that what you're saying? For different, different versions, different, different systems would have different, you know, different versions. So different of their afterlife. On the different source systems or planetary or planetary systems. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Some beings yeah. live for thousands of years, some hundreds of years on different planets. Okay. Our life is relatively short compared to other planets. It's because it's the school of hard knocks. We want it to be short, probably, but that's right. Was though the afterlife? Uh, I mean, is there's an afterlife for this source system? There's an afterlife for that source system. Is that what's based on? Is it like there's an afterlife for this planet, and there's an afterlife for that planet, or how? Um, for each what, Eric? Would it be each planet? This is each solar system. 
Oh, okay. So that's like a planetary system. Okay, cool. Yeah, planetary system. Oh, wow. All right. Awesome. Um, all right. Now, um, your, your older sister, Michelle, has these two souls that she sees, earthbound spirits. One is Hank, real tall, white shirt, blue jeans, maybe cowboyish type. I don't know. He just paces. He really likes attention from her. And then there's this, um, uh, this black woman, a sort of heavy set that she calls Henrietta. I, I think she named them. I don't know. Now she, Michelle claim, thinks that uh, they're really not actual spirits, that they're the holographic energy imprint, like maybe something traumatic happened to them and that the energy imprint is left there, but they're real, they really have crossed over and they're, they're, they're is that, what's the case? Okay, so... I mean, in general, not just with in this specific example. Well, the woman Harriet is an earthbound spirit. She hasn't crossed over yet. Okay. Um, the man you called him. She called him Hank. Yeah. Okay. And even her her husband heard him say his name like hey nick like that so that's kind of cool that doesn't sound like an energy imprint to me but i don't know okay so is he they're both spirits that haven't crossed over okay. um they'll find people who can hear them or see them um i'm wondering if michelle has a past life history with them oh maybe it's land that's what i'm trying to find out so okay okay Michelle knew them in past lives. Cool. That's so, why they come through to Michelle. Can it be the case that um, that sometimes what we see and we think are ghosts are actually just energy, holographic energy imprints from their Can life? Be. That's usually more like a like a scene, like a battlefield. You'll or a oh, battle scene. Cool. You'll hear like people will be driving by a. a a field and they'll, they'll glance out the window and think they see soldiers and confederate oh. uniforms battling that kind of thing that's an energy imprint oh i got you all right where it just oh. that that's because that's in the akashic records and it's still very active and oh. it's still playing out yeah, yeah. the I records see. for the planet so I want to also um, ask Eric, what's it like after the whooshing and then the light and everybody has their different thing, whatever, you could talk about the life review or whatever, but what happens? Okay. What happens? What is death like? Tell me everything you know about what death is like. And also how do we soothe ourselves and others who are afraid of death? Yeah. So those two things I want to finish up on. Okay. So he says immediately when you leave your body any kind of pain physical pain you're feeling it's just gone mm. and this is typical there's just a sense of peace now he's saying like in his case he had that but also because of the circumstance because he took his life he also immediately went into, oh, my God, what have I done? How is my family going to be affected? So he he's saying his situation was a little bit different. Yeah. But Although he was torn, he felt so good. So he's talking about that feeling so good. Mm -hmm. That's what most people are feeling. He said every burden you've had, everything that was such a big deal that just you lost sleep over irritated you with irritated you about it it's just gone none of that matters anymore you just um he said you 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 go through this tunnel. for some people it's like a bridge but you go through this tunnel your appearance changes you're 20 years old 30 years old mm -hmm. um and he said there's like a call that goes out there's like a signal because people who are who you've interacted with all of their higher selves or beings that are on the other side will come together and greet you and so he says the first order of business is a big um he's saying the f word party big f and parties oh yes yeah, so i've heard that that's cool <laughs> yeah and he said and um it's kind of like this you because most people don't although that's changing they don't learn 
why all of these things happened in their lives. But you get over there and you start getting clarity. And he said, you're like, oh, that's why that happened. Oh, that's why that happened. It all makes sense. And you tie all of the pieces together. So there's a party and for some people, he said they will maybe have a little trouble because um, they're concerned about their family. How will their families go without him? He said there's, he's showing me like, it looks like a, a screen that you look into that shows them what their futures, most likely what their futures are going to be like so that they can see and go on. So once they do all that, um, then they'll meet with the Council of Elders to have their life review. Um, find, you know, they'll identify what, what they accomplished, what they still wanted to accomplish. You know, they'll start putting things in motion for a new life or whatever. Some will choose to be spirit guides, and there's a training for that. Oh, okay. Um, and then he's making another point. Some of us on the planet right now, because um, of the work we do, when we cross over, we can be a spirit guide pretty immediately. Um, we don't need to go through the training. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And he says, those are actually really the best spirit guides because it's so fresh in their mind. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, but some, uh, I guess we like to hold some people, especially more than others, I guess, like to hold on to their humanness for, for a while, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's okay. Um, it is, some do, but he says it's so different when, when you get over there, you're just not attached to the things you were. They just are not important to you anymore. Yeah. You know, you see, a, you see the bigger picture. Yes, it's like right, an right. observation instead of like being entangled in it. So yeah. well, what about if you uh, killed yourself and it was not the right thing to do, right thing to do, because you still had things to accomplish? Because uh, I don't want to make this sound like, oh, it's a rosy picture. I'm off of myself now. So, so what about if you uh, commit suicide when you really, it was not in your original plan to do and other people are going to be affected and they're going to be yanked off of their spiritual path that was connected to yours? Well, he said that's actually harder because you have to, um, well, oftentimes people will have to, or they'll choose to be reborn into a similar situation, like right away and have to go through the same kind of things and have a different outcome. But he says that happens sometimes, but other times those things you were supposed to do when you were alive, you have to like whisper into other people's ears to get them to do it oh and so he's using himself and channeling eric as an example he says perfect question mom he says that's kind of why this all got started because had that not happened i would have gotten to a point in my life where because of all the trauma trauma that i felt in my mind where i would have started seeking out alternative help and I would have created something like what we're doing mm -hmm. and brought a whole bunch of people together, like what we're doing. But when I died, I had to find other people to okay. complete the tasks that I, I was supposed to. So that's what you're doing. And he says, like a lot of the mediums that you work with and that he yeah. works with, those were all people that were going to come together anyways, farther down the road and reconnect. So he had to, he had to learn how to communicate with his family and with mediums and that, so that all of this could be put together. And if you ask me, he did a pretty good job at it. I think so. I'm so proud of you, baby. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so how do you comfort someone who's so scared to die and they're soon going to die? Well, this is the hardest thing because people are so afraid to have that conversation with someone. Oh, because they're afraid too, probably. Right, right, right. And then you just don't know what to say. And I'll tell you, I just started and I started doing this um, when I was in my nursing career too. If we had somebody in hospice, mm -hmm. I would ask them, do you know what to expect? And are you afraid? And do you have any questions? Oh, cool. And then... Um, 
I had, oh, this was several years ago. There was a book about a near-death experience that a woman had. She died during surgery. It was embraced by the light. She was on the other side for quite a while and spoke of it. And so I would recommend that book to people. Yeah. And a few of them, I even read it to them. Oh, that's or so brought cool. it in so their family members could read it to them. Yeah. Oh, so you just great. have that conversation. And like with my grandmother, um, I, you know, I talked to her about it too. And, you know, I said, there really were no mistakes made, Grandma. You don't have to be afraid to die. You're not going to hell. You're not going to be punished. That was all um, not true. The things they told you. And she said, I know, I know. Oh, so, but she really was afraid to die. She yeah. was raised very strong Catholic and, um, you know, they, they, they told her all her life, you know, that, um, that's people awful. go to hell and purgatory. And that's you living her. with that fear all your life. Oh my God. It is. It is. She, she was one of those people who was so afraid of dying that it diminished her life. It yeah. really did. All right. So that is a good point. So, yeah. yeah. You just, you have those conversations with them. Be, and Eric is saying you you would be so surprised by just bringing up the subject with somebody, how they want to talk about it and how they want to ask questions. So how early do you start talking to people about it? Because I don't want my grandkids, for example, they're different because I, they know everything I know. Well, pretty much. Um, you don't want them to be afraid. Uh, of, of death not because of re what religion says necessarily because they might not you know be a, their family might not make the have them be a part of organized religion but just because wow grandpa what so-and-so died where is he it's i don't know it's so it's such an unknown so when can you start talking about this with children six or seven erickson yeah. Usually at six or seven, they have the capacity to un really understand it. Wow. He said before then, it's such a difficult concept to understand. Oh, wow. He said there the are book? there yeah. are books. There are books that you can read children oh, and books wow. on reincarnation and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's saying um, there are people if if it's a child who's actually ill and transitioning, um, there are people who are actually trained. Um, I don't think I could do this, but are actually trained to um, teach the child what to expect and what's going to happen. He said some hospital programs have that. Oh, that's awesome. Like, um, I suppose, social workers with specialty training or something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when we do our spiritual um, school for kids, online school, then that I think talking about sub the subject of death ought to be a really good lesson. Mm -hmm. so, and talk to them about reincarnation too, yeah. um, Eric says, you know, because little kids come in with memories mm -hmm. and that, you know, and just talk to them about reincarnation and that you'll go home for a little while and then you'll come back in another body maybe you'll come back to your same family or maybe maybe a new family or maybe you'll go there and wait for us all but you just tell them i'm always going to be able to hear you i'm always going to be able to talk to you yeah that's so cool anything else you want to mention about death eric we're keeping videos kind of shorter because people you know uh, yeah it goes better that way people have <laughs> People are busy and have short attention yes. spans. Yeah, and I do too. <laughs> He's saying, don't be afraid. It's a beautiful experience. Um, birth is much more scary than death. But then again, the human experience is a treasure. So don't give it up so easily. Mm -hmm. if Correct. It's part of your plan. All right, sounds good. You guys check. And, uh, she's awesome healer and uh, medium, obviously. Check out Kim Void at embodied-light.com, which we will put here and, and also in the description box. And thank you so much, Kim. You have anything else you want to say about you? No, no. We're good. Uh, Eric wants to say I love you. I love you. And I love you too, Kimberly. Well, I love you too. Bye-bye.